All right. Well, uh, I wasn't expecting to do such a quick video so soon. Um, <clears throat> so I was just scrolling through Cummins Farm, and uh, this is a relatively new post. This was about, you know, since about three hours ago. It's about the RAM emissions recall, right? Uh, the 67 Alpha recall, and this guy is talking about some problems. Now, I this could be completely coincidental, right? However, I wanted to bring some attention to it. And one of the reasons why I uh, got rid of my 21, not so much the emissions recall, because that doesn't bother me, because I my 21, I had no problems with it. Um, I did not get the 67 Alpha recall. The dealership, when it was there for uh, the other recalls, the transmission dipstick recall, the uh, you know heater grid relay fire recall, the other tailgate recall, uh, and the transmission programming recall, they said that it needed the 67 Alpha recall too. This is before the news broke on you know on the on the inter on the interwebs. And uh, I didn't know what that was, so I asked them, what is the 67 Alpha recall? And they said it has to do with your emissions. And I said, nope, we'll do all the other recalls, but not that one. Do not touch the emissions system. So uh, I, there was no issues with my 21. I got the other, all the recalls done, and it was, it was a good truck. But, um, you know, one of the main reasons why I got rid of it uh, was so that the wife can park in the garage. That was one of the biggest things, right? Happy wife, happy life, so they say. Um, two, I wanted a truck that didn't have emissions. Granted, I, I've talked about emissions in the past and that I, I have not experienced any problems. However, with time, I am sure I would encounter issues. And this, this post that I'm going to read here is just a good example, right? Um, if I'm going to have a truck that I have to pay for repairs or parts, I want to be able to uh, work on the truck myself and I want parts to be not super expensive, right? So let me read this to you. This guy owns a 2013 Ram 25067. He has 172,000 miles on this truck, okay? Against my desire, I took my truck in for the 67 Alpha emissions recall because I am in California and would not be able to register my truck without it. Up until the update was done, I have not had any powertrain issues. Following the update, the check engine light came on, P20 Echo Echo. I took it back to the dealer and was told they had similar problems with other trucks following the recall. The dealer told me they are working with FCA to rectify the issue. After the dealer had the truck for a week and a half, they told me I needed a new SCR and DEF injector. They also told me that if FCA is claiming a coincidence between the recall and the sell. I paid $4,000 for a new SCR and DEF injector. A week later, the cell comes back on, throwing the same codes. Back at the dealer, they still don't know what's wrong. It's been three days now. At this point, I need to wait and see what they have to say and possibly contact an attorney, but I feel strongly this is related to the 67 Alpha recall update, right? So, you know, everything you read on the interwebs may or may not be truth may be exaggerated etc etc right um, but i don't think this guy is you know making you know lying about his experience he's just venting about his experience with this recall and the fact that the dealer says that they've had similar problems following the recall kind of reinforces that well Maybe this recall isn't so good. I know that TFL Truck and Truck King and some other folks are talking about the recall and saying it doesn't affect anything. Everything is fine. Well, that's great for them. But every truck is different, and some trucks may react differently than others, right? And uh, this guy owns a 2013. It's an older truck. Completely out of warranty. But here's something else that's interesting. Apparently, 
Right, you keep going down, and you know you got to research this stuff. I didn't. Re I'm literally just reading this now, and I'm literally making a video on it, like right now. Right, I haven't delved much into it, but I just find it interesting. Right, this guy Matt Tim says the SCR and DEF systems are supposed to be covered by the extended warranty. I don't know if that was there. You should have started a fresh four-year, forty-eight thousand mile emissions warranty when they did the recall. I hope your truck gets back soon and your $4,000. Google and read the entire consent decree. It specifies a lot your dealer may not have. So that's interesting. So, you know, I'm going to Google this a little bit later, but it's interesting that if this 67 Alpha recall has an extended warranty of four year, 48,000 miles on the emission system and dealerships, maybe they're not aware of it because not every dealership is aware of everything about their own vehicles prime example a lot of Ford dealerships don't know about OCR operated commanded regen right a lot of them don't know that you can enable you can enable for a private individual in their trucks OCR so that we can control the regens ourselves a lot of dealerships don't know about that I go to a specific dealership in Lafayette uh, North Carolina uh, Lafayette Ford there's a guy there, uh, I don't want to throw his name up, he's a great guy, he's, a, he's, a, he's the lead, he's the like supervisor diesel mechanic guy there, he knows all about it, he would, every, you know, when I got my 17, my 19, and my 2020, he enabled uh, OCR for me, now I don't know if that's available for the 22s and up, I'm sure it is, why would Ford get rid of that, but he would always enable it for me so that I can do my own regens. But a lot of dealerships don't know about that, you can call a dealership right now, it's a random dealership. 50-50 chance they may or may not know. So this recall, if it indeed has an extended warranty, then this dealership needs to give him back, needs to refund that $4,000, right? I mean, that's what I would think. Here's the other thing. Like this post says, he lives in California, and we all know, we've all read the post, we've seen the videos, we've seen the updates, whatever, right? California will not allow you to re-register your truck for the next year unless you get this recall done. I don't like that. That's called government oversight, right? They're, they're overstepping their bounds. I, I, that is forcing you. The government is forcing you to get this recall and if you don't get this recall well we won't allow you to drive it on your on our roads well not like that's going to stop anybody i see 10 to 20 cars daily with expired tags or no license plates here in south carolina and when i travel into georgia or north carolina i see 10 to 20 cars a day that have either expired tags or no license plate Okay, I'm not talking about no license plate in the license plate holder part of the car, but they have their license plate in the back window. No, I mean no license plate. Zero. But they're not getting pulled over. I, I, so California can say all they want. Well, we just won't register a truck. I'm pretty sure people are still going to drive. But I don't know. It is California, right? I mean, it's a communist state for crying out loud. Right? They hate freedom there, like in all other blue states. <sighs> Anyways, so this is, this is one of the main reasons why I got rid of my 21. Because the truck is nice now. Everything works now. The 12-inch screen works now. But 10 years from now, is it still going to work? Maybe, maybe not. It's going to go out. Everything in your vehicle is a wear item. It's going to fail at some point. Now, the question is, your 12-inch screen, 360 camera, blah, 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 blah. If that fails, you're out of warranty, okay? You got to pay the cost for that new screen and get it installed. Unless you can do it yourself with all that wiring and blah, 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 right? You can tackle it yourself or ticket the dealer. Either way, you're going to spend between three to $5,000, most likely, most likely, because that screen alone, I Googled it. This was like a week ago. It was like uh, almost $2,000 for that 12-inch screen from Mopar. $2,000.
Now imagine going to the dealer and having them install it. Okay, the labor, the time, the markup that they're going to do, yeah, it'll be anywhere between three and five thousand dollars total when they're done. My limited had the uh, the headlights that rotated fifteen degrees when you turned. Great feature, loved it. It was great driving at night. Oh, but what happens when that headlight goes out? That headlight is really expensive, right? You can't just replace the motor, you gotta replace the whole headlight. Now, luckily, I am mechanically inclined, so I could replace it myself, but the part itself will cost a lot. The tow mirrors. The tow mirrors have the three, they have the cameras, the 360 camera is part of the tow mirror, right? That stuff is going to be really expensive. All these things that have little motors are really expensive. You know, I agree with Long Long Honeymoon when they gave their, you know, reasons why older is better, right, in their trucks. Um, I like my tow mirrors. The 2002 Ford that I just got, and I just replaced it with the second gen tow mirrors. Um, I love them. The only thing that's powered about them is the, the mirror itself where I can adjust it. But that if that goes out, not a big deal, right? Folding in the mirrors, that's manual. It'll never fail, right? Telescoping the mirrors, it's manual. It will never fail. I just get out and telescope it myself. Fold in the mirrors myself, right? It will never fail. By the way, those mirrors from 1A Auto, I only paid like $260 for the set, okay? For the set. Google their tow mirrors for the fifth gen, right? Four and a half, fifth gen, whatever you want to call it. For me, it's a fifth gen, okay? 95% of the truck is all new. The only thing that isn't new is the skin of the cab. But people say, oh, no, it's, it's, just a, it's still a fourth gen truck. When the whole truck from ground up is all new except for the skin, which is the cab of the truck. That's it. Everything else is new. Okay? If anything, it's a 4.9999 gen truck right? Whatever. That's, that's another discussion, right? People war about that on, on the internet, right? Um, but anyways, I don't like government oversight. And we, I think we're all sick and tired of it. And this, this, this prime example, this is exactly why I got rid of my 21. This is exactly why I got a 9812 valve. I can work on it myself. It's super easy. Parts are parts are available everywhere you know i think i talked about my fan belt how it like exploded just like a few weeks ago and um i just pulled over the truck was still driving i just pulled over the side of the road shut the truck off i ubered got a new belt came back to the truck 10 minutes later got a new serpentine belt on and i was back on the road serpentine belt cost me like i don't know 20 bucks something like that um i looked up for the serpentine belt for a 2021 Ram with 6.7 Cummins. Uh, at that time, they may be available now, but at that time, I looked at Geno's Garage, AutoZone, Advanced Auto, O'Reilly's, and Napa. They were all on back order. The serpentine belt for a new Ram Cummins diesel was on back order. But they had plenty of the old 12 valve serpentine belts. Do you understand what I'm trying to say here? Parts are more available for the older trucks than for new trucks. It amazes me that there are still shortages for new trucks, like parts, right? There's some things that you just you just can't find because they're on back order, right? Even their fuel filters are on back order, right? You gotta wait till they come in and you then people will stag them up and then they're back on back order again, right? And they're way more expensive. You know what a fuel filter costs for my 12 bucks? I mean, for my 12 bucks. For my 12 valve Cummins, like 24 bucks on Gino's Garage. Fuel filters for the 7.3 Power Stroke from Riff Raff Diesel, 27 bucks. And it's a Motocraft filter, 27 bucks. Like, <laughs> that's great. And it's only one filter. The 6.7 Cummins for two filters. 
from Gino's, Gino's Garage has good prices. They're cheaper than like going to the, uh, the dealership. Even then, each filter for the engine and chassis mount, they're around $60 to $70 per filter. Per filter. Like, I, I'm, I'm, I'm done with that. I'm done with, uh, you know, like the Ford 6.7s. You have to use a specialty oil. It has to have a 1,000 uh, parts per million of phosphorus. And if it doesn't, you can't use that oil, right? That's what I love about these older diesels. Any CK oil, any CK4 oil, right? CK4 is good. It's uh, it it qualifies and meets all the specs for all the previous generation classification of oil, and it works just fine. It doesn't matter if it's Shell, uh, Dello, uh, Mobil. Uh, you can go, I mean, if you want to spend money on synthetics like, uh, you know, Schaefer's, Amsoil, sure. But it doesn't matter as long as, as long as the specification meets, that oil specification meets the specifications for my 7.3 or my 12 valve Cummins. It'll work. It'll be just fine. So anyways, this, this, this little thread here just got me just, wow, like, that that it just it blows my mind right i mean it really shouldn't it should be expected right but it's government oversight right i don't need Cal i don't live in california thank god i don't need california dictating to me what i can and can't drive because that's what they're doing you don't think that's going to spread of course it's going to spread that's what these liberals do they're like a cancer on society ah they hate everything that our constitutional republic stands for. They don't like freedom. They don't like freedom of speech. All this other jazz, right? They want to control every aspect of your life. And if you do, if they don't like, if you do something they don't like, they want to take it away from you. Control it. Control you. That's what they do. And this is a prime example. Amongst many prime examples. Anyways, this video is a rant video. This just got my blood fired up, amongst other things. My blood, I get fired up about just about anything. But anyways, uh, if you've stuck with me through this entire video and listened to me rant, thank you. Right? If you agree with what I said, please like the video. Share it for crying out loud. That's what, they, that's what all these YouTubers say, right? Like and share and subscribe, right? I, you know, I, for the longest time, I think I had this channel for almost over 10 years. I never said that in, in, in the older videos, right? Just recently, I've been saying it because I do need the support. I like the support. I'm glad that you guys support me my little following. Thank you, right? Um, maybe I'll do more things instead of just truck stuff on this video. Maybe I'll start talking about some truth out there that people need to hear. Right, particularly about what's coming. Um, but anyways, thank you, and we'll see you in the next video.